we have to have some recognition of the things that have destroyed the city. Second Street, Jackson Ward, is a central part of the city. It's a central location of the city. And when you deliberately, when you deliberately drive a highway through a central neighborhood of your city, just because the people who live there after 26 years in the same location, Jamaica House found new life just four blocks down the road, but still on West Broad Street. After a year of stress from COVID-19 and economic uncertainty, I've said a lot went through her mind before the move. owner of Jamaica House Restaurant and Karina's Jamaican Grill. I was never supposed to be in Richmond. This was never a place I, you know, growing up in Jamaica in a small little village of maybe what, maybe eight or seven families, so, you know, maximum of 150 people. I grew up not having any sort of clear understanding where my life would go. And you're young, so you have no clue, but you know, you're ambitious. And I worked hard at school and thought, you know, there has to be more beyond the island and the shores of Jamaica. I moved to Brooklyn in 1986 with my dad. He had business, he had a bakery, and for whatever reason, just wasn't doing well in the later years. This was a family business and couldn't keep the business going. So he decided that for a fresh start, he would move to Brooklyn. And I said, if you're leaving Jamaica, I'm not staying here, I'm coming. So I ended up in Brooklyn, living in Flatbush. Fundamentally, I wouldn't be able to make it. I wouldn't be able to make enough money. I wasn't gonna be safe enough as a young single woman. So I came to Richmond, moved into the apartment and decided to get a job. And I got a, a job in the kitchen. And I was like, all right, this is great. I got a job, I got a nice apartment, things are happening. And then they said, well, you know, your job is only $4 an hour. I was like, $4? And then the lady said, my supervisor at the time, well, would-be supervisor said, well, if you take the job and but you work night, you get 15 cents differential. So in 1994, um, with the help of you know parents and in-laws and everybody pulling together, we were able to open up at 1215 West Broad, which is now across from the Siegel Center. Siegel Center didn't exist back then. That area at night, you wouldn't you wouldn't want, wouldn't want to walk the streets after dark. If we were at this point to sit and think about it and think about what we'd have to go into opening a business like that, we would have never done it. But I knew enough that I could do this thing. We started catering, we did all kinds of things, you name it. We went to festivals, you name it. We, we did everything we could possibly do to get word out there that this is who we are. This, this is, we're Jamaican, we're unapologetic about it. We're producing and, and cooking food exactly how you would have it on the island. Because we wanted to make sure when we were presenting our culture, we're doing it honestly and authentically. And so people appreciated that. They appreciated that when they came in and got jerk chicken. It was spicy. So coming in, opening a restaurant, a lot of people didn't know curry chicken, but what they knew was, it's chicken with gravy. People knew rice. We just put beans in our rice. They might have ate their rice separately as a separate side dish. We combined them, but still, it was still identifiable. Oxtails is a stew that's rich and satisfying. And from there on, the restaurant just became wildly successful. You know, we just knew that we'd landed in, in the right place at the right time. We, I wasn't ambitious thinking that, you know, we we're gonna make a ton of money. What it meant was that I was able to raise my son at that point, who was only four years old. And so when, when the restaurant got started, it was simple, it was one rule for us. The rule was 
Whatever Flo said, we did. Flo is my mother. So when she came in and said, okay, this is how you make a brown stew chicken, this is how you braise oxtail, this is how, this is how you make a curry goat stew, that is exactly what we followed. She came here, when, when I asked her to come up to help with the restaurant, uh, she said, well, I can only be there for two weeks. I said, sure, I'll take whatever you can get. She was here for two years. And so VCU Foundation bought the building. Right around 2018-19, they, they terminated our lease with a 90-day notice. And that was heartbreaking for me. It was, a, it was really, really tough. It was tough. This place that I'd worked really, really hard to develop and to run my business out of for, for many, many years was taken away from me. I have employees. Those people have families. I have a family. And it's only with continuing the business that those families get taken care of. And knowing that our, our customers were waiting for us. You know, I knew that those people, no matter what happened, once we reopened, they would be there for us. That, that, that made me have the confidence to say, you know, we can do this. In our second location at Karina's on Midlothian, we did expand that menu. We wanted to introduce the food, but we wanted people to be able to ease into the food. So we added pizza. But what we did, we put oxtails on pizza. And so we started looking at properties. We started looking at properties, and out of all these, these places that we looked at, we decided that Jackson Ward, with a history of Jackson Ward, and the connection to our community, it made sense for us to be here. This, this should be our home. We can try to reconnect to the history and the heritage and the proudness, the pride that drove this community before it was destroyed. How do we hold on and teach the, the new generation what it means to come from a community like this? What it means to have ancestors like Maggie Walker, you know, Bojangles. This area is so rich with culture. Embodied in the legacy of community leaders such as Mrs. Maggie L. Walker, as a civil rights activist, a pioneering entrepreneur, and a member of the first generation of African Americans to come of age in the wake of slavery, she understood uh, that what she did in the present would impact the future, not just here in Richmond and in Jackson Ward, but across the country. We have to have some recognition of the things that have destroyed the city. Second Street, Jackson Ward, is a central part of the city. It's a central location of the city. And when you deliberately, when you deliberately drive a highway through a central neighborhood of your city, just because the people who live there. And they dug a trench 80 feet deep and 18 blocks long and basically cut the entire core black neighborhood in half, displacing 10,000 people. There's a natural valley that carries the same route four blocks away. It would have been cheaper to build the road there, it would be natural to build the road there, and the valley is still vacant. Having that thriving culture and community, you have the Hippodrome where, you know, you think about black artists and black musicians, this, is, this was sort of the center of the universe for a lot of them in the South. From the 1920s to the 1940s, the Hippodrome was the center of nightlife and entertainment. It was a place where you could catch a movie or a live performance. Most importantly, it was a safe space during segregated time. Anywhere that they, is drivable, people drive in and say, hey, I, wanna, I, I came because I wanted to have what Guy Fieri had. Our second location, Karina's, was featured Gravy, on beans. Triple D. Now, is it proper to pick it up and eat it with your hands? Best way to do it. This is the dish right now that should be torturing you. It is so 
delicious. In 2018, and from that, I, I was invited to compete on uh, Guy's Grocery Games. To be fair, and to be fair to my really, really accomplished chefs, Lenworth and Patrick, these are the guys who put in all of the effort all these years, and to know that we, we built something that is now on a national level is really special, it's, it's truly special. Going on TV to re represent the business, I needed to make sure I could do it in a way that they could be proud of me, our entire staff could be proud of me, and I could be represent my culture and my cuisine in a positive way. When they asked me what I was gonna do with the money, you know, I had only one response. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be shared with my employees. All of that was shared with them. It was a really good, it was a really good story, but to us it was not it wasn't a story. This is what we do. You know, we work as a family, we live as a family. What we're saying right now, we want to remind people, you know, come back to your neighborhoods, man. Come back, figure out how we can help each other, how we can help save each other. New at five, more than a million dollars is making its way to Richmond's historic Jackson Ward. According to Senators Mark Warner and Tim Kaine, that money is earmarked to help revive areas in need. 8 News reporter Alexis Bellamy joins us now live from the Digital Center with what this money will do. Alexis. Yeah, Eric, Deanna, good evening. The grant from the U.S. Department of Transportation will be going directly to the Jackson Ward District, and here's why. The area was split in half by the construction of I-95 and I-64 back in the 1950s. Hundreds of families were displaced, and the historic community was separated from the rest of downtown Richmond.